Welcome to this video lecture on modeling thin film flow and lubrication theory. This is an introduction to this field and my name is Roland Larsson. <coughs> I'm a professor of machine elements at Luleå University of Technology in Sweden. What we are going to discuss today here is to, to discuss why lubricated bearings or hydrodynamically lubricated bearings work. These are typical mm, pictures showing typical hydrodynamically lubricated bearings or slider bearings, journal bearings as we call them normally. What you see here is that you have, <laughs> this is a typical tilting pad or tilted pad bearing while this is a journal bearing <coughs> you the gel thing here is is uh, is uh, the lubricant the oil it's in the there is a load applied here it's the same for the journal bearing typically there is a, a motion of one surface yeah, in this case the lower the flat surface while in in the journal bearing that's the journal that is rotating. So we will discuss now a, a good bearing operation here. It means that we have a, a good oil film carrying the load, separating the surfaces and avoiding any contact of the surfaces, meaning that we don't get any wear and very low friction normally. <coughs> so how do we get that and how does it work? Everything is about thin film flow, and when I say thin film, I mean I mean that the film itself is much much thinner than the length of it. So normally we denote the film thickness by h and the length by l, and so h is very much smaller than l, maybe hundred times or thousand times smaller. We also assume that one or both surfaces may move and there may be some pressure differences. So there might, might be some pressure pushing the fluid through the film if P1 is bigger than P2, for example. A typical example of a hydrodynamic uh, bearing is found in a, in a hydropower plant. <coughs> in a hydropower plant, it's a, it's a very big uh, vertical shaft here carrying the generator and the turbine down here and it must be supported somewhere it must be separated from the the rotating part must be separated from the stationary part somewhere and that is done in the support bearing which is a very big uh, pad bearing uh, maybe four or five meters diameter here <coughs> and uh, but should again remember that the film thickness is very thin so so in this very large machine the the rotating part is separated from the from the stationary part by an oil film which is maybe not more than 30 40 50 micrometers thick that's pretty fantastic and so we are going to discuss now how does it work and in the later part also can we do some mathematics? Uh, can we model this lubrication effect in some way? So, <coughs> first of all, why is a pressure formed in the in this pad bearing? <coughs> well, uh, we assume a bearing again that looks something like this. We assume that it has some inclination here. We are coming back to why. Uh, but we, it is definitely required. <laughs> we assume that we apply a load that the, the oil film should support and we assume that the lower flat surface is moving with a speed u1. Before going into the, into the explanations you may sit back and think about this that in these two cases we have one we have one case with a little bit thicker film than the other one 
and it's the same speed in both cases but probably different load carrying capacity of these two bearings which one will carry more load you think and why stop the video for a while and think about the answer <coughs> the answers come here <coughs> or the explanations come here there are two laws of nature that must be obeyed the first one is force equilibrium the applied load must be balanced by some pressure that is uh, occurring here in the lubricant film that is carrying exactly supporting the applied load so actually the the pressure varies something like this it's zero in the in the both ends and it increases and has maximum somewhere here <coughs> so this pressure must come from somewhere and there must be a pressure otherwise there will be no separation of the surfaces the other law that must be obeyed is the flow balance the flow that's coming in must also come out so and making use of these two laws will explain everything first we will make use of the continuity law I, because there are also two types of flow inside this very thin film first of all you have something named quet flow that is the flow driven by the surfaces so if the surface here is moving with the speed you want it will also bring the lubricant with it so it will stick the lubricant particles or atoms very close to the surface will stick to the surface and will move with the same speed as the surface while the lubricant atoms close to the stationary surface will not move at all <coughs> and in between we just assume that it's a linear variation of this velocity profile that this is so this is how the how the velocity of oil particles varies along the inlet of the bearing in the outlet of the bearing it varies in the same way you have the moves with the surface speed in the in the on the lower surface and it's stationary on the on the upper surface and already here you can see that there's a flow balance problem because the flow coming from this flow profile is bigger than the flow coming from this one because it, the triangle is smaller it's a, if you this is the this is the velocity of flow so if you integrate this flow profile you get the flow itself <coughs> so that means that the flow coming out from the bearing is smaller than the flow coming into the bearing that's not can't be true so there is also another type of flow which is called Poisson flow and it's driven by the pressure gradients so because we now know that there is a pressure here and it's maximum pressure somewhere here that means that uh, the fluid will be squeezed out in both directions due to this pressure direct pressure pressure gradient so and the trick is now that these two types of flow balance each other they actually balance each other perfectly well and makes it possible to get exactly the same flow in as the flow out so if you if you have too much in the inlet for example the the pressure flow will will flow in the other direction and make the flow into the bearing smaller while in the outlet you get help of the pressure to increase the flow and that means that in the end you get you will get the same flow in both ends of the bearing and actually if you go in every intersection here along the bearing you will have exactly the same flow as the flow coming in to the bearing so that's the two that's the flow continuity law of na nature will create this balance and that also creates this pressure gradient so the pressure gradient changes itself in such a way that it exactly creates the pressure driven flow required in each interface coming back to that in the next part 
why did we put some some uh, inclination here on this surface? <coughs> well, that's because there is a requirement for good lubrication to have a what we call a converging gap. That means that uh, in the direction of motion, the film must be thinner and thinner. Otherwise, there will not be any pressure buildup, and there will be no no good lubrication. If you imagine, if you have if you have parallel surfaces, that means that the coet flow will will balance each other. In the inlet coet flow will balance the outlet coet flow without having any any need of pressure driven flow. That means that there will be no pressure driven flow and there will be no pressure gradient and there there will be no pressure. So in order to have a a good lubrication you need a converging gap. If the if the inclination would have been in the other direction then it would be it wouldn't be any any pressure in that case either because then you will have less flow coming in than coming out and the, and the, and since there is no pressure you 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 will have a non balance in that case too and there will be no load carrying capacity of the bearing and there will be no bearing so converging gap is a is a must moving surfaces is also a must because otherwise you will not not have any quet flow you will have no lubricant drawn into the bearing and you also need some viscosity of the fluid. Sometimes air or gas viscosity is sufficient, but in many cases you need thicker fluids, like oils. <coughs> Just a comment also on how we look upon lubricant films. When we show a bearing, we show them like this. It looks that the lubricant film is very thick, but as I said, the lubricant film is very much thinner than the length of the bearing. So this is what they normally, what they actually look like. You can hardly see the films because they are very much thinner than the length of the bearings. We sometimes uh, compare to a football pitch. If you scale the bearing up to the size of a football pitch, you may get something like this, that uh, if the bearing length is 100 meters, then the, the thickness of the, of the lubricant film could be something like one decimeter or a meter. Or, or sometimes we say that it's the height of the grass, that's the thickness of the, of the, of the lubricant film in comparison to the length of the, of the football pitch itself. So that's, then you get a, a idea about about the ratio between film thickness and length. Okay, now coming back to the question which bearing carries the highest load? Well, in this case it must be the the right hand side bearing that carries the higher load. Because the in this case the film thickness is smaller and the flow resistance uh, is smaller or sorry bigger because it's a smaller constriction here it's it requires more force more pressure more pressure gradient to to push the fluid through this small constriction and uh, the higher the pressure gradient the higher pressure build up and the higher load carrying capacity uh, similar explanation if you change the speed of the surfaces so if you if uh, the left hand side bearing has higher surface uh, velocity <laughs> and if we assume that uh, the load are the same or the applied load in this case are the same then the the thickness of the film must be bigger in this case because because the higher speed surface will carry more fluid with it so that there will be more quet flow and then we must open up the gap here to make it uh, uh, make it possible for the pressure driven flow to squeeze it out that bigger the or balance this uh, this bigger quest flow and a similar explanation if the in vis uh, viscosity I increases so if you have a a more fluid lubricant again the keeping the both the load and speed constant the case with the 
higher viscosity will get you bigger bigger fill because uh, there will be greater flow resistance <laughs> the the pressure gradients will be about the same in these two cases because the applied load and the speed are the same but uh, but in order to squeeze to uh, to get the, the the total flow resistance the same in both cases <laughs> you must open up this this uh, minimum film thickness the constriction a little bit more in the case with a thicker oil and that's the explanation to why the a thicker oil is giving you a thicker film but you may intuitively understand that, that the thicker lubricant gives you a thicker thicker oil film that's that's normally what you think about when you think about it but this is the more theoretical explanation so that's the introduction to this and in next part we will discuss the equations thank you very much